Okay, let's go ahead and get this show on the road. Wait for it to load in. Ugh. Okay. Go ahead and get this started. So starting off with your rundown for the 250 main event for the AU series, we have Evan Holt, J.R. Reyes, Braden Tharp, Max Spokes, Javi Ruiz, Rogan McIntosh, Cash Woods, Sonny Spicer, Thomas Bento, Loris Modar, Tristan Powell, Jet Hollyhead, Magnus Gregerson, Trevor Spencer, Alex Griffiths, John Heilman, JB Blondieu, I'm not too sure. Jonathan Hewitt, Josh Doglish, Rico DeLat, Noah Hoke, Juan Gomes, and that would be it. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. Going on board with, we're going on board with Rico DeLat. And the gate is down for the 250 LCQ as it looks like Rico's the only one that didn't go off the gate. You see, it looks like it's going to be Jet Hollyhead who gets the whole shot with a huge pilot behind him. As it looks like Trevor Spencer is going to get by into that first place spot. As they both make a mistake stepping onto the table. Trevor Spencer though able to hit that super cross triple from the inside. Makes a little bit of a mistake but still able to get in front of Hollyhead. You see Thomas Bento in third with the red plate. Braden Tharp in fourth, John Heilman fifth, Rogan McIntosh sixth, J.R. Ray is seventh, Javi Ruiz is eighth, and Juan Gomes ninth, and J.B. Blondie in tenth. Back out front with your leader, Trevor Spencer, trying to hold off, excuse me, Jet Hollyhead. Both riders make a clean run through the whoops, but looks like Spencer's going to be able to hold on with the speed from that outside in the corner. Both of them getting that triple on clean this lap. Spencer's able to get that triple triple. Oh, and Jet Holly had sends it up the inside and takes his front wheel. He's going to take the lead as Rogan McIntosh moves into second. He's going to allow Javi Ruiz to get by. Trevor Spencer's going to have to roll. That's going to allow... Who is that? J.R. Reyes to get by and Juan Gomes. Along, as, along with J.B. Blondieu. Magnus Gregerson, Sonny Spicer, Thomas Bento, Braden Tharp, and finally Trevor Spencer, who's lost a lot of positions off of those two mistakes. We see Rogan McIntosh trying to hunt down Jet Hollyhead for this first place position in this main event. Hollyhead's looking very comfortable on that. Oh, fuck. Excuse me. Looking very comfortable on that Covenant. I believe it's a Gas Gas. Or is it a Honda? Let me double check. No, it is a Gas Gas. Okay. On the Covenant Gas Gas. Followed by Rogan McIntosh, who isn't running his fill skins, or they haven't sent them to the, be on the skins thread. J.R. Reyes moves up in the third place on the VSR Cowie. Javi Ruiz. P4 on the P4 on the DP26 KTM. Funny Spicer P5 on the VSR Cowie, getting passed by Trevor Spencer, who's also on the BPC Cowie, running the Covenant Gas Gas. Magnus Gregerson on Supremacy. Thomas Bento on Impact and JB Blondieu in ninth, and Juan Gomes in tenth. As Bento and Gregerson go down, that's <laughs> oh a huge pile up in this corner. More riders funneling in. Juan Gomes gets out of it fairly decent. John Heilman gets through, making a good amount of passes. Same with Evan Holt, Cash Woods, 
Thomas Vento, the red playholder, not having a good ride this moto after a fairly dominant performance last week. Back out front with Jai Hollyhead, who has grown his gap just a little bit over Rogan. As Rogan actually went down before the Supercross triple, luckily it doesn't look like JR is going to be able to capitalize on Rogan going down, but it will close up that gap just a little bit. Javi Ruiz not too far back behind him, along with Trevor Spencer and Sonny Spicer, who makes a mistake coming from off track. Juan Gomes, John Heilman, Cash Woods, Evan Holt, Magnus Gregerson, Jonathan Hewitt, Noah Hope, J.B. Blondu, Thomas Bento, Rico DeLatte, Braden Tharp, Tristan Powell, Alex Griffiths, Max Folks, Josh Doglish, and Loris Modard. That rounds out the North field. Back out front with Hollyhead, which next lap will go on board just to see what lap times are and see how exactly he's choosing to get around this track. It looks like he's already lapped a few riders pretty early into this main event. Go on board. though which has gained him a lot of time on some of the riders that aren't able to hit it lap riders are going to become a little bit of an issue for him as he goes down that's going to allow Rogan McIntosh to close up but he also makes a mistake before the finish line Jerry Ray is still holding on to third place a good ride for the BSR Cowie rider Javi Rue is still holding in fourth Trevor Spencer off track in fifth Sunny Spicer sixth and Juan Gomez in seventh Back out front with Jay Hollyhead, who looks like he doesn't lose that much time to Rogan. Probably cut the gap in about half as Rogan gets into it with a lapper, two lappers, and almost goes down as they're about, they lap Thomas Bento, who is the series points leader. But not a good ride at all for Bento, as we see Rogan McIntosh still in the group of lappers. But passed by J.R. Reyes, who's moved up into second place now. Tara Spencer still holding on to that fourth place spot. Just got past Javi Ruiz, who was down in that corner in that pile up. See, J.R. Reyes has to roll it. That's going to allow Rogan McIntosh to get by and allow Trevor Spencer to get into striking distance. This battle for second is going to get a little bit heated towards this latter stages of the moto as long as all the riders can hold on with that amount of time. Funny, Sunny Spicer getting into it with Lapper. And Rico DeLau, who didn't go off the start, already, I believe he's in eighth. Yeah. So after about a 30 second head start for some of these riders, has already moved up into eighth. Magnus Gregerson in ninth, and John Heilman running out your top 10. As looks like Jet has already pulled a fairly large gap over these three. Trevor Spencer moves up into third place over J.R. Reyes. Back out front with your leader.
Trevor Spencer has moved up into, or still in second place, actually. Or no, he moved up into second place, got past Brogan McIntosh. Javier Ruiz moves up into fourth. Juan Gomez in fifth. J.R. Reyes falls back to sixth. Plenty Spicer moves up into seventh. Rico Delat's still in eighth. And Magnus, Magnus Gregerson in ninth. Van Halen is still holding on to tenth as well. It looks like this race is going to be a little far-fetched for anybody to catch up to Hollyhead unless he starts making some serious mistakes. As I say that, he goes down. The commentator's curse comes back to bite Jet Hollyhead, but it looks like he's not going to... Again, has a big enough gap where it doesn't really affect him that much. The worst thing that comes out of it is now he has to deal with more lap riders. Makes the move up the inside of, I believe that's Braden Tharp. Lap to rider. He's looking to go far inside. Because I see a lot of riders going far outside, trying to maintain that speed, going into the rhythm section, having issues getting the pop to triple. Has not changed. Rico Delat actually moves up in the seventh. I mean six. JR is back up in the seventh. Heilman eighth. Sunny Spicer ninth. And Gregerson in tenth. Let's see. Where has the leader lapped up to? I believe he's already lapped into the top ten. I believe that's Mac Holm or uh, Mac Spokes getting lapped again. It's looking like it's going to be all Jay Hollyhead for this race. I don't believe anybody's going to be able to catch him with the pace that he's been able to hold this entire main event. Granted, he has made a few mistakes, but the mistakes he makes is after he pulls out a very large gap. So I don't believe it's going to be an issue for him to take home this main event win. Although Trevor Spencer is looking very comfortable on the track. Staying dialed in his lines as they say that he misses his rut. Rogan McIntosh, not too far back, still manageable to be able to catch. Javi Ruiz and Juan Gomez, the teammates, running in fourth and fifth. Rico DeLatte still in sixth. Heilman moves into seventh. Ray is eighth and Gregerson ninth. And then Sonny Spicer rounding out your top ten. Back out front, Holly had another mistake, has gone down. Not a full fall off, but enough for him to lose a little bit more time to Trevor Spencer. Granted, the time that he does lose, he seems to gain back very quickly. As it looks like Rogan McIntosh has moved up in the second, Trevor Spencer must have made a mistake. As Rogan makes a mistake before the finish and has to roll, that's going to allow Trevor Spencer to get right up behind him again. This battle for second has not let up. They've been having a lot of position changes here. Spencer makes another mistake in this rhythm section, allowing Rogan to pull out even more. Check a, take a look at the gap. It's 15 seconds for Jet Hollyhead. So a comfortable gap with about less than two minutes and a lap left to go in this main event. Able to get that triple from the inside, which is another place where he's gaining a good amount of time on the rest of the riders. A lot of people struggling to hit is Rogan McIntosh is getting into a big group of lappers. 
be honest, they're not really letting him go. Broken gets that triple clean as well. Trevor Spencer casing the super cross triple. Eilman has moved up in, I believe, that's six, yes. Rico Delap falls back to seven. J.R. Ray is still in eighth. Braden Thart moved up in the ninth, and Sonny Spicer in tenth. Magnus Gregerson, 11th. J.B. Blondieu in 12th. Cashwood's 13th. Thomas Bento, the red plate holder, in 14th. Not having the moto that he wanted. Tristan Powell is in 15th. Alex Griff is 16th. Jonathan Hewitt, 17th. Max Books, 18th. And Evan Holt, 19th. Noah Hope, 20th. Josh Douglas, 21st. And Loris Modart in 20th. 22nd, I'm sorry. Back up from Jet Hollyhead, who looks like he got into it with a lapper, maybe, or he just made a mistake because he's lapping P9 at the moment. Looks like Rogan has a gap after getting into the back of a lap to Ryder. For Trevor Spencer. These two still have not much positions. Juan Gomes and. Javi Ruiz still riding in fourth and fifth place in the DP26 KTM. As Rogan McIntosh down on the whoops, that's going to allow Spencer to close in a good amount. Not far behind in the whoop section. And coming across for the white flag is Jet Hollyhead. I believe he just lapped Rico de Lat. Yes. So Brady Tharp go down out of the rhythm section. Oh, as Jet Hollyhead goes over the berm. Rogan McIntosh is not too far back. That's going to allow him to close in. See Hollyhead struggling to get back over the berm and just run, Tharp runs straight into him. That does help Hollyhead get going, but that is a very bad track re-entry by the leaders. Rogan McIntosh also made a mistake. He does have a big enough... Or no, he lost the position to Trevor Spencer from that. As Rogan's whole race has fallen apart in this last lap. Jeff Hollyhead is coming across to take your main event win in San Diego, followed by Trevor Spencer in second. Looks like as long as Rogan can get through this section, he should have third on lock. Which he does. Juan Gomes making the move into the fourth place position. John Heilman gets fifth. Javi Ruiz should come across in sixth place. J.R. Reyes should be coming across in seventh. Which he does. Rico Delat can't lose a spot. Can't gain a spot. So... He will hold on to that 8th place position. Sonny Spicer finishes 9th. Braden Tharp in 10th. Magnus Gregerson in 11th. JB Blondieu in 12th. Cashwood's 13th. Thomas Bento 14th. Kristen Powell coming across in 15th. Max Spoke 16th. Alex Griffith 17th. And Jonathan Hewitt in 18th. Rounding out your active riders. We wait for Rico DeLatte to come across a line to see how cuts come out. And it looks like everybody will keep their finishing position. No Tharp moves up to 9th, forcing Sonny Spicer back to 10th. And that's all your changes in the running order. So we'll go to a quick little break while I go ahead and get everything changed over.
Okay. Go ahead and swap back. So on the gate for your 450 main event, we have Austin Eklund, Braden Carter, Cody Saunderson, Ronan Wastel, Logan Higney, TJ Harrison, Jack Mark, Dale Mullins, Emilian Mabru, Jason Stubbs, Steve Bonnell, Frank Jackson, Tristan Williams, Aaron Rockefeller, Kyle Biggs, Joel Genre, Riley Hewen, Nathan Denny, Pablo Vial, Clint Martin, Brody Biggs, and that would be it. And we'll go on board with Braden Carter to start off this 450 main event. We get ready for the trade for the gate drop. And the gate is down and they're away in San Diego. The 450 AU championship as Austin Eklund gets the whole shot. Very sketchy start and goes down. That's going to allow Pablo Vial to move up into first. Ronan Walsall making a mistake. That's going to allow Saunderson to get by along with Braden Carter, who with a very bad start still ends up in third. Nathan Denny in fourth, who goes down. That's going to allow Riley Hewen to get by, followed by Clinton Martin. Dale Mullins, Frank Jackson, Kyle Biggs, who makes a mistake. Austin Eklund's going to go ahead and get by. Tristan Williams, Brody Biggs, Ronan Wastel, Jason Stubbs, and I believe that is Frank Jackson, who was down at the end of that rhythm section. We go back out front with your leaders, Cody Saunderson and Pablo Vial, first and second, followed by Braden Carter. Which I have his gear, but not his bike. Riley Hewen in fourth, Clint Martin fifth, Dale Mullen sixth, Austin Eklund in seventh, Tristan Williams in eighth, Emilian Mabru in ninth, and Nathan Denny rounding out your top ten. As Tristan Williams goes down, that's going to allow Mabru, Denny, and Wastel to move up into tenth. P.J. Harrison close behind in 11th. Frank Jackson making another mistake. It's got Tristan to get back up into 12th. Back out front with Pablo Villal, who running a very clean moto so far. Exactly what he wanted. Just get out front and check out from there. But he's got a hands full. Braden Carter following behind in second place. You are defending series champion. We all know Carter has the speed to catch and pass him. The question is, does he have the consistency on the track to be able to stay up for the entire moto? And does Vial have the consistency to stay up the entire moto and not go down? As Vial makes a mistake, that's going to allow Carter to close in even more. As Carter makes a mistake. So overall, Vial did not lose really any time from that. Carter's still, though, close behind. We see a left rider jumping on track next to the leaders. Carter makes a mistake coming out of the corner. That allows Riley Hewen in third to close up. Cody Saunderson in fourth, I believe. Clint Martin still in fifth, Austin Eklund still in sixth, Dale Mullins, Kyle Biggs, Million Mabru, and TJ Harrison, I believe, rounding out your top ten. Back out front with Vial, who's looking very comfortable on the track so far. Only one slight mistake, but didn't cost him very much time as Carter continues to make more mistakes coming out of that whoop section. I expected to see more of these 450 riders going inside on that Supercross triple, considering they have the power to be able to make it more comfortably compared to the 250 riders that do have to stretch it out. But most of them are electing to take the outside before the Supercross triple. As Vial makes a mistake, that's going to allow Carter to get by. 
We move up into that first place position. Riley Hewen's going to close in even more on that second place spot. As we see Austin Eklund make the move up into fifth. Behind me, Cody Sonnison now. Clinton Martin in sixth. Dale Mullen still seventh. Kyle Biggs still eighth. Harrison still in ninth. And Mabry still in tenth. As Vial's already made the move back up into first, Hewen moves into second, Saunderson in third, Carter's falling back to fourth, right in front of Eklund now. So not good for your defending championship. Your defending champion, as he falls all the way back to fourth, which having Eklund that close behind is not good, considering the speed that Eklund has had on this track following his NA series win. As we see Riley Hewen down, we see Eklund make the same mistake that he looks like Hewen made. As Carter goes down over the Dragon's back, so does Hewen. That's going to allow Saunderson to hold on to second. Eklund move up to third. As Saunderson goes down, that's going to allow Eklund to move up into second. Braden Carter back into third. Clint Martin in fourth. Saunders in fifth. Riley Hewen in sixth. As is that No, that was just a lapped rider. Okay. See lapped rider. Good heads up thinking by the lapper to not pull on track as Carter runs into a down Saunderson. That's gonna cause him to lose even more time to Clint Martin. As Saunderson down again with Riley Hewen. Gonna allow Dale Mullins to get by. Back out front with Viao, who, again, no mistakes other than the one little slip up he had to let Carter get by. Has ran a clean moto. As long as he doesn't fall off the bike, he should be happy with how he's been riding. Small little mistake there, but nothing too big. As, again, as long as he doesn't fall, he should be able to hold on for this 450 main win. Especially with the amount of mistakes everybody else has been making. As we flip back to Austin Eklund in second place. Who after that first, current, first turn crash. Fought his way back up into the second place spot. After pulling the whole shot. As runs into a downed rider. Drags him a little bit. Carter's still holding on to third as he's going to come into that same lap rider. Dale Mullins in fourth, Clint Martin fifth, Saunders in sixth, followed by Hewen in seventh, Harrison eighth, Mabru ninth, and Tristan Williams rounding out your top ten. Back out front with Pablo Vial. Making another huge mistake, but luckily not to go down from it. Lapped rider and laps himself. And we'll go on board. And Pablo be off for this lap. The OJ is the finish line. Forced to go inside. And this lapped rider is not giving him any breaks. Nice and smooth over that dragon's back. No need to push over it. As Vial gets into the back of the left rider now, that's going to allow Eklund to close right in. Disappointing to see lapped riders playing such a factor into this race, just not moving out of the way. was Jason Stubbs, so they've already lapped up into the top. Pretty much getting up into 12th place lapper right now. Maybe even more. As I believe that's Ronan Wassel that they just lapped. Might be wrong.
Riley Hewn has fallen back to eighth, allowing Mabru to get past. Saunderson's falling back in the ninth, and Denny's moved up in the tenth over TJ Harrison. So it looks like everybody's fairly spread out. The closest two riders are Mabru and Hewen. So Clint's got a good gap along with Carter over Clint. Or, I'm sorry, Dale over Clint. Then Dale to Carter. Eklund not too far ahead of Carter and not super far back from Vial, but it's going to be tough to catch if Vial doesn't hit the deck at all because they're already halfway into this main event. Eklund getting into lapped riders. Allowing Carter to close up the gap just a little bit more, ever so slightly. As Hewen's gotten past Mabru now, along with Clinton Martin. That puts him up into fifth place. Mabru into sixth, Clinton seventh, Saunderson eighth. Then he moves up into ninth, and Tristan Williams up into tenth. Followed by TJ Harrison and Ronan Wastel. Which this battle for the second and first place position. A little bit far ahead for first. But between Carter and Austin Eklund. It is getting fairly close. As we see a lap rider go up the inside of Carter and take him out. I believe that's... Or no, that's Pablo Vial. Vial's lost the lead. That allows Eklund to move up into first. So Vial with an aggressive move up of Carter's inside has caused Carter to go down. Allows him to regain second place. But Austin Eklund able to get up into the lead position. What a turn of events after Vial making a few mistakes, but not enough for him to lose the lead and retain a fairly decent gap. Has fallen back into second place a few seconds behind Eklund now. As Carter battling with Dale now. Hewen's still in fifth. Honestin's still sixth. Then he moves up in the seventh. Clint Martin in eighth. As I believe that was Carter down off the side of the track. That's gonna allow Dale to get back by. So that was Clint Martin that was down. It looks like Vial has closed in a little bit on Eklund. Maybe Eklund had a little bit of a mistake at the beginning of the lap. Missed a rut or something like that. Because they've already lapped up to 7th in this main event. And they're not too far back off of Saunderson, who's only another 10 seconds up the road. At this pace, with how long this main event's going to be, how many laps they're going to have on the track... It wouldn't surprise me if they lap up into the top five comfortably. Dale Mullen's a little sketchy, but holding on is Carter off the side of the track. Is coming up on lapping. I believe that's Quinn. Yes, it is. A good ride for Vial and Eklund. Both Vial able to hold on to the lead for most of this main event so far. Just recently crashing and losing, surrendering their lead to Austin Eklund. But Eklund coming back from fairly deep in the pack after going down in the first rhythm section. After pulling that hole shot. Has shown the grit that he has and the ability to run through the pack in this field. Vial making another mistake in the rhythm section. Don't know how he was able to save that swap out of the rhythm. Dale Mullins jumping fairly deep into that corner but still keeping it on two wheels. Carter having to deal with a bunch of lapped riders. We saw someone fakie down the Supercross triple landing. Riley Hewen is doing the same, having to just kind of hold on through the pack. 
Saunderson making a mistake, but a little far ahead on Denny, who's having to deal with a lap rider not moving. Mabru not close behind, or not far behind. TJ Harrison dealing with a lap rider as well as Clinton Martin. Or no, that's a position, I'm sorry. Clinton Martin, oh, as we see, I believe that's Logan Heaney that was getting lapped. He's closed up on... Oh no, that's Carter that's being that's lapping them ahead of him, along with TJ Harrison. Tristan Williams, Aaron Rockefeller with a very poor moto after his last week's performance. Jason Stubbs not looking too hot as well as he gets into a position, Ronan Wastel. Logan Higney not doing too hot in the far back of the pack as he's getting around his teammate, which I believe that's Clint Martin. Back out front with Austin Eklund, who's just trying to survive at this point. This track has created a war zone between these 450 guys. As Denny's chasing down Saunderson, not too far back, and Carter has surrendered the position to Riley Hewen now, who's a good amount back from Dale Mullins, but still possible to catch him with I believe four and a half and a lap to go. Pablo Vial still holding on a second and Eklund in first. That's Carter's move. Or, I'm sorry, that's still Dale Mullins in third. Ewan's still holding on to that fourth place spot as we see Carter entering the whoop section in fifth. I'm going to deal with a few lapped riders. Saunderson's in sixth. Denny's seventh. Mabru eighth. Clint Martin in ninth, getting pushed out of the way by TJ Harrison. As Harrison makes a mistake, cuts across the track right in front of Clint Martin. I'm not sure how that's going to fly with the whole track reentry. So that would be considered. Clint Martin still able to hold on to this position. TJ Harrison still struggling to get out of the rhythm section. Frank Jackson also struggling to get out of the rhythm section. Jason Stubbs pretty far back along with Aaron Rockefeller, who's not really any closer. Back out front with your leader. Three minutes and a lap left to go in this main event. Looking smooth as we get a lap time check. A 50.2 last lap. Eklund riding this track very smooth, very fast around it. Yeah, still not making very many mistakes, just kind of chilling back in second place, just trying to coast it back into the finish. Tim Mullen still holding on to third, Riley Hewen in fourth, Carter in fifth, Thonis in sixth, Denny seventh, Mabru down in eighth. I'm sorry, Clinton Martin's in eighth now. Mabru up in ninth, and Tristan Williams in tenth. Take a look at Carter's lap time. Fast lap of a 49.7. Last lap was a 56.8. So not looking too good for Carter. Just needs to focus on not hitting the ground so hard and focus on staying up the entire main event. A 
as Eklund a little moment through the whoop section, but still able to keep it on two wheels. Looks like they lapped Cody Saunderson, so the next person for Austin Eklund to come up to lapping is Braden Carter, which in reference, Eklund just now landing the Supercross triple, Carter just about to get into the finish line. As Eklund goes off the track, he'll lose a little bit of time, but not too much. Next lap will be white flag. These riders. Is, looks like nobody's really moving positions. Everybody's got a good cap over each other. As Eklund coming to take the white flag in this 450 main event. It's cool to see that this section has brought out a few people being able to jump through them, at least skimming the first half of them and trying to jump through the last bit just as a consistent line. It allows them to slow up a little bit more for that inside in the corners. Austin Eklund goes down in the la all over the Supercross triple. It's going to allow Vial to close in. I don't know if Vial is going to be able to get by him. As Eklund rejoins the track just ahead doesn't look like unless he makes another mistake that Vial is going to be able to get to him which he doesn't so Austin Eklund will take your 450 main event win followed by Pablo Vial Dale Mullins almost going over the bars over the Supercross triple the number three looks like he will get the third place position Followed by Riley Hewen. In the fourth place spot. Carter has already secured his fifth place finish. Cody Saunderson finishes in sixth. Denny seventh. Clinton Martin is going to come across in eighth. A million Mabru in ninth. Frank Jackson tenth. Tristan Powell, or I'm sorry, Tristan Williams in eleventh. Aaron Rockfellow should be coming across in twelfth. Well, TJ Harrison following up in 13th, Logan Higney 14th, Stubbs 15th, Ronan Wastel will come across in 16th, Joel Jarnup in 17th, Jack Mark 18th, Brody Biggs, Kyle Biggs, and Steve Bonnell will have all exited the race. We'll take a look at your rundown, and positions have not changed between your top 10. And we don't see any position changes. So this will be your final result. We see Austin Eklund, Pablo Vial, Dale Mullins, Riley Hewen, Braden Carter, Cody Saunderson, Nathan Denny, Clint Martin, Emilian Mabru, and Frank Jackson rounding out your top 10 for this 450 main event. Thank y'all for tuning in to this week's AU stream for the EM MXS EMF Racing Series. I appreciate all the support on the series for both NA and EU. I mean, I'm sorry, NA and AU. And y'all have a wonderful rest of your day.